if you offered me right now, you said it's going to end in a draw and go to penalties. I say, absolutely. I'll take it. Sign, sign me up. Because if, yeah, you put, sure. if you put Team Ilya between the sticks on penalties, I'm not it's not like Hugo Lloris isn't a bum. I mean, he's he, he's played at the highest level of the game. But if you told me right now that Sporting Kansas City could get this game to penalties, 100% sign me up and let's get weird and see what happens. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by Emprise Bank. If you're thinking about starting a business or know someone who is, check out Emprise Bank's SBA Loans. It's always good to know your options, and they can be your partner in possible. What's going on, everybody, and welcome Hold back on. to another episode of No Other Pod. This is technically a hashtag victory pod. It is. I feel like it. What half it mass. Half mass victory. <laughs> half mass victory pod. I'm Jimmy, along, as always, with my good buddy, Daniel Kuzer. Dan, what's going on, my friend? Things are things are fine, man. Just uh, you know, owning a house is just great when you have to have a plumber come over and realize why your drain backed up in your basement and you had water. Uh, what a time I had! Don't even start with me with plumbing. I've okay. had, oh yeah, You're I've had me. massive plumbing bills since I moved into this new house, and it's uh, it's not fun. So home ownership, it's great. It's not fun. What's bad is there was water, and then I I came down, and the water was gone. And I'm like, did the house just slurping up? And I was like, what is happening? Uh, but I took pictures of it too, so I could show the plumber. I I was I'm like, I'm serious. There was water here. Yeah. How much water? <laughs> uh, I can send you the pictures. I'll show you what it okay. looked like. But yeah. uh, you know, we snake. He snaked the drain. Uh, he we we turned on every faucet and and fixture in the in the house yeah. and washer and dishwasher just to try to trigger it to happen again so he could see like what yeah. triggers it right and, and it didn't happen again mm-hmm. and i'm like this is crazy so we're thinking dude what if a tree root mm-hmm. punctured the sewer line did it smell like poop no it's not it's not sewage at all oh. which is crazy it looked like potential like he said it looked like potential food like from a sink. So he's like, let's run your kitchen sink. Um, that would make sense. You know, he's like, if it's like suit, if it's like toilet paper, you know, he would oh, see man. toilet paper. Right. Yeah. But I was like, no, you wouldn't. Cause we have hello tushy bidet, hello tushy.com <laughs> slash no other. That's right. It's uh, even hearing about it, man. It stresses me out. I'm still dealing with some of the, the aftermath from some of the, the leaks that I uncovered and such. And it's, uh, it's not fun. So it's not, but also I, I've been getting a little better at like, you know what? I can't control this. Like this I need is to, what it is. I need to take lessons from you because let me I'm tell trying. you, my anxiety has been through the roof. Yeah. So I'm not religious, but I've always been like, you know what? Hey, let someone else take control here. Like I, I can't, I'm not a plumber. I can't fix this. Yeah. Uh, I grew up j- with my parents who were basically like they had very minimal knowledge of things and then they would call a professional. Yep. That's kind of my battle. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, ah. Uh, it's uh, stressing me out just talking about it. So. Bro, I, I installed a video doorbell one time, like yeah. wires and shit. And I was like, am I an electrician? Yeah, no. See, plumbing and electricity, I, things that I'll mess with. I so. couldn't believe I did it. And installing the bidet, I was like, look at me being a plumber. Uh, well, even that. Well, that was the first plumbing issue I had. I went to install the bidet in my new house and the valve broke off and water starts shooting out of my toilet. And I'm like, great. Awesome. So then I went and turned off the main water after I found that. And then when the plumber came back out and he turned off the main water, that valve broke off. So I had to go turn off water at the street. <laughs> had to go to the street. <laughs> Holy so shit. I literally went. I watched how he did it at the street. Then I went to Home Depot and bought the tool that I need in case my main valve ever breaks again that he's already replaced so I can go out to the street and turn my water off. <laughs> so that's the uh, Yeah. It's, you know, good times. Great, great, great the, you know, American dream, own a home. Oh, it's like I have kind of miss the apartment life sometimes. Sometimes it's it costs a lot of money. I've spent a lot of money dealing with these yeah. plumbing issues at my house, and you know what would help me is if I had an extra five hundred dollars. So, if you would like an extra five hundred dollars, or maybe you got plumbing issues like me, and you're like, I can really use an extra five Benjamins, then uh, go to bluewirepods.com slash survey and complete the Blue Wire audience survey about you and your podcast listing habits for a chance to win a $500 gift card. The survey will help create a better advertising experience for audiences and in turn, help this show. That's bluewirepods.com slash survey 
where all you have to do is answer some simple questions for a chance to win $500. Make sure to read the full terms and disclaimer, plus complete the survey for a chance to win. That's bluewirepods.com slash survey. The link is also in the show notes of this episode. Hell of a transition. Applaud to you, my friend. <laughs> it was a professional transition. Uh, uh, dude, I think we're going to have to jump in. We got we got to move. We got things to talk yeah. about. We got two games. Yes. And we got a final on Wednesday. And mm-hmm. and and we're eliminated from the playoffs, everybody. So in that, in the honor of that, I have worn the tire track kit. <laughs> it is, uh, if you look at me, I've been run over. Uh, life, life is bad. Use this as the podcast uh, art. If you could, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's it's just it's it's a sad deal. Like you know what one KC team qualified for the playoffs this weekend, and right. other one was eliminated. That's right. Uh, so I'll let you know how much fun I'm having on the podcast tomorrow without you. Yeah, make sure you go check out currently here on uh, KCSN Soccer's feeds and on the KCSN Soccer YouTube channel because man, there is still a very good soccer team in Kansas City, and and they are starting to run shit over there in the NWSL. They got some new signings this this summer. Uh, it's yeah. it's a good time, so make sure you go check out currently with Dan and Chris. Hell yeah! Um, I I feel do I I what? I mean, do we just start with Wednesdays? Do we start well, with we Colorado? Start, let's start with Colorado. There. You were there. I got to go. I know this was a big deal. You, your schedule. You're very very busy man. Big time actor. I was very pumped. It, it was almost kind of a warm ish day out there, and uh, man, I was thinking Colorado. They good. Like they're gonna they're gonna come in and probably whoop, whoop his ass and uh, that is not what happened. Well, especially you know there was you know I wouldn't say this was like a second choice eleven, but it was certainly a rotated eleven. Like you could tell that Peter was because was looking toward that that open cut game next Wednesday, and he was like, we're gonna we're gonna shift some things around a little bit over these couple games. Was he though? Because then we played kind of the main guys against Minnesota, but then some of them came off at halftime after forty five minutes. Well, that's so, only because there was a two-hour rain delay. <laughs> well, I mean, that also might be true. I wasn't that at too. the Minnesota game because I was in uh, Michigan watching my alma mater, USC, break my heart once again on the football field. But uh, I, I get I get to my hotel after that game, and I'm like, oh, I should probably check in and see what happened with, uh, with Sporting KC because I had zero cell service at the big house. 111,000 people were there. Could not get a damn iota of reception. I, I get to my hotel, and I look, and it says halftime. I'm like, what do you mean halftime? It's like 10.30 p.m. in uh, Kansas City. And then I was like, oh, there's a rain delay. That sucks. Yeah. I was excited, too, because I, as my show got over, I went out, said hello to some people. I got a notification saying the game is restarting in like five minutes. And we threw it on in the car and went home and watched the rest of it at home in bed. Watched the and disaster. It, it was a disaster. I, I think that not much needs to even really be talked about the Minnesota game. Uh, you know, kudos to everyone who stuck around for that shit. But uh, you know, you're, you're the real fans. That's what I gotta say. Yeah, but it, it did. The week did start better with uh, in, in the midweek game with Colorado. Um, yeah, it was it was another interesting um, semi rotated lineup. You had Castellanos and Fontas back there as uh, the two center backs, and Pulse Camp was was in goal. You had uh, Memo and uh, Stephen Afrifa in there um, in, in the midfield and and on the left wing, and then. Uh, Polito and Agata, we were doing that again for a little bit because why not? And I'm not gonna lie, I, I was not overly excited to see Polito and Agata back in this sort of Polito number ten, Agata up top at the striker position because it hasn't worked all that well uh, in the times that that we have done it in recent history. It worked really well the first time, probably because it was new, and then really did not work much uh, beyond that. Uh, but credit where credits due, and I will admit where I was wrong when I was wrong. And uh, this was a time when Alan Polito had really quite a good game, probably his best game of the season, and it wasn't actually close. And it started in the eighth minute when he's busting his butt, running, he runs into the box, and he gets a a poor clearance from Colorado, and he slots it home past the Colorado keeper well. And, you know, we had just talked about Polito not scoring league goals since, like, March or April or something like that, and he decided to to put an end to that narrative with this uh, Colorado game, that's for sure. It's amazing. This 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 whole game in general blew my mind. I, I couldn't believe it. I that we, we outshot them thirty one to six, outshot their shots on goal nine to three. Mm-hmm. It's it, the whole game, dude. I was like, we're gonna get smoked in this game. Ain't no way Colorado doesn't come in here and get nuts. Yeah. And we got nuts. I mean, yeah. a, a brace from Polito, a brace from Eric Tommy. I had a I had a blast and I had some sporting pay to use, so I was like There you go. Chris, you want some food? 
So I bought Chris some food and bought Marissa some food and had like 40 bucks of sporting pay, dude. When they give you, I don't get the sporting pay because I'm not a season ticket member because I sit in the press box, but when they give you sporting pay for like a rain delay, does it stay in your account and carry over? It ain't that. No, this was like a, uh, this was like an incentive thing to renew your season tickets, mm. uh, which I, I did already renew them. So I, you know, like, so I was like, all right, thanks. Yeah, essentially. And then I thought I had more money to like maybe get Dippin' Dots, but Marissa got like a $9 water and I was like, Jesus Christ. Are you uh, you getting some rainbow ice Dippin' Dots? Is that the only vegan option? I don't know. Probably. Yeah. I don't like do you, ice. Do you know this? I don't know. Rainbow Ice is the one that's like the not ice cream. It's like the little popsicle no. balls. I, I, I like a I good, uh, good mint chip Dippin' Dots. Okay. But I'm not going to lie. Dippin' Dots are overrated, I think. I'm not a Dippin' Dots guy. Yeah, I mean, but what? Ice cream right of the future. at the top of your section. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's what, 25 years now we've had ice cream of the future? You'd think they'd evolve ice cream a little bit more in the last few years. True. We are in the future right. of that future. What right. the heck? So I'm just, you know, I think Dippin' Dots were awesome in like 1997. You're like, oh, it's ice cream, but it's small and it's spherical. Now it's just like, I, I just want a pint of Ben and Jerry's. I would rather have a lemon ice from uh, Worlds of Fun. Remember those? There you go. I've only, I'm not, I've only been to Worlds of Fun, I think, once. What the hell? So, Are you serious? Look, look. Oh my gosh, should we go? I, I mean, I'll go with you if you want to, but... I mean, I don't want to ride some of that stuff. I like, grew up going to Disneyland. So Yeah, it's not that. It's a little bit yeah, like... Group trip, Nick, let's go. No other pod trip. We'll have no other pod day at Worlds of Fun, and we're going to make Dan go on all the rides. Bro, that... Let me get a hip replacement first. Uh, <laughs> I've been mulling that over. I should probably get that done. Uh, the, you won't ride the Mamba. That's probably the safest roller coaster there is. <laughs> the rest the rest of the roller coasters will whoop your ass. See, this is my fear. It's the same fear I have with like Six Flags in LA. And we will get back to soccer in a second. But it's my same fear I have with Six Flags in LA compared to like Universal or Disney. Because you go to Disney, you go to Universal, and like, you got grown ass adults who are working at the rides. Like they've made a cur- like they've made a career choice in some cases. You're like, I would like to work at Disney. I would like to work at Universal. And 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 they work their way up and they get into management at times and then they work like that's a thing. I feel like World's of Fun, it's the same thing as like Six Flags was in LA. You got like high schoolers who are too busy flirting with each other to really check like the safety restraints and everything. And I'm like, I don't I don't know, did we go through the, op- the proper operational checks before we sent this roller coaster on a series of loops? Yeah. So, if anything, you almost just want to go to Worlds of Fun for like the Halloween portion and go through like their haunted house shit. I could do that. Yeah. Would you? Because that you hate scary stuff, though. I know, but I've done that before. I went to not Snake so Farm, scary. which is the same thing as as Worlds of Fun. But dude, Worlds of Fun. This stuff. Some of this is like, and I talk too much. I'll be in there just like being like, "Hey, look at this guy, vampires!" I like it I, makes I me do feel that better. I did that one time too in a haunted corn maze, and we like, I'm, I'm, it was with my youth group when I was like 17, and I was terrified. And halfway through it, I'm like, "I'm okay. Like they're not going to hurt me." And by the end of it, guy runs out of the corn with the chainsaw chasing, and I'm like, "What's up, dude? I'm a talk. I'm, I'm talking to him." And he goes, "Can you can you run out and pretend like you're scared? Because because I get mad at us if, if people aren't scared." And I was like, "I can do that." So he said that. <laughs> I ran out. But so I feel like if we went to Halloween Horror Nights or whatever, that's Universal, whatever it's called it at World of yeah. Fun, uh, I feel like we'd be the most annoying people there because we'd just be like talking to the people to try to keep ourselves from being scared. I get a little spooked. I, I'm better off at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween. There you go. <laughs> at Boogie, Disney. Bo- Oogie Boogie Bash at Disneyland is what they call it. Yes, that oh. would have been great. Um, anyway. Soccer. It's how I, I, like, I don't have a Halloween costume yet. So if anybody wants to send me a Halloween costume, put it in a five star rating and review. Let me know what show I need to be for Halloween and I'll read it on air and I'll pick one. So, oh, dude, pretty easy. Look at me. I'm a sad sporting fan. Well, I'm a it's easy enough sports fan. You look at all my teams, <laughs> uh, except the Packers. Malik Willis, he's coming. Uh, hey, don't, don't get me started on the Chiefs. All these anti Chiefs people are uh, pretty mad at us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Sporting they played really well in the first half of that Colorado game, up 1-0. And before we take our break here, we're up 1-0. It's Colorado. It's halftime. Uh, I-, I didn't feel like this game was going to end 1-0. I felt like we probably needed to get at least a few more goals because Colorado's a good team. Is that what you were feeling? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I was like, dude, a goal ain't going to get this done, you know. Uh, but we, <laughs> we got a few more before they even got their one. Like, it, it just felt so good. Well, let's take our break real quick, and then we come back. We'll finish up this game and 
see if there's another game we want to talk about. We'll, we'll figure it out. Looking for tickets for your next event? Tickets for Less is your number one source. Save big on every purchase when you use promo code KCSN at ticketsforless.com. I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I shouldn't have to jump through flaming hoops just to save a few bucks. Saving money should be easy with no BS. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless for just 15 bucks a month with a purchase of a three-month plan, I had to call them on it. And it turns out, it really is just that easy. At Mint Mobile, you can get 15 bucks a month with a three-month plan of premium wireless service. The longest part of the process of Mint Mobile was the time I spent on hold trying to cut my old provider. So to get started, go to mintmobile.com slash KCSNNOP. There, you'll see that right now, Mint Mobile has three-month plans for only 15 bucks a month, including the unlimited plan. And all plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. So you can find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile and get three months of premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and a new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash KCSNNOP. That's mintmobile.com slash KCSNNOP. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash KCSNNOP. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to 15 bucks per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on limited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Did you hear that? Was that was that Nick's voice on that uh, ad? <laughs> the, the sultry tones of Nick. Yeah, sure was. Dude, no, the uh, being a Chiefs being a Chiefs guy, it's not been uh, great today. A lot of people pretty mad at the referee you know what? and whatnot. They can they can they can go kick rocks. I was gonna say something worse, but you know why? Because look, I I have a little bias here because I live in Kansas City. I will root for the Chiefs if they're not playing the Packers, but I I'm a Packers fan. They are my first team, but I have I have an affinity for the Chiefs. And I was listening to some podcasts today, and I see people online like oh, the Chiefs always get the bricks, the Chiefs always get the flags, the Chiefs always. Have you looked at the stats for the 2023 season? The Chiefs actually were in like the lower half of teams that benefited from penalties called against them and were in like the upper third of teams that were penalized. Like this narrative of the Chiefs always get the calls is literally untrue. Literally a loser's talk. And well, then, you don't like how your team's doing? Go attack someone else's team. Well, and then they started shifting to, well, Mahomes always gets bailed out by penalties whenever he throws interceptions because there's a conspiracy. Yes. You know what? What happened? Roger Goodell in New York City looked across the league, looked at L.A., looked at New York, looked at Chicago, looked at Miami, looked at all of these big markets and said, Kansas City, the the one of the smaller media markets in the entire league, that's the team we want to rig the league for, and that's what we want to have happen. And Bill Barnwell, if you follow him, I know this is not a Chiefs podcast, but if you follow Bill Barnwell, he put up a great thread debunking mm-hmm. this fake Mahomes always gets bailed out by interceptions. And it, it was the Bengals fans last week. And you know what? You know who actually throws more interceptions per attempt than Patrick Mahomes does? Joe Burrow. In terms of like bailed out by by uh, uh, interceptions bailed out by penalty calls. Joe Burrow has more per attempt than Patrick Mahomes. I've had to unfollow a couple Cowboys fans. Like they've been, I mean, they... they, they I know Chris is talking some shit, but you didn't have to put him on blast like this. Was he really? No, I'm kidding. He's just oh, no. <laughs> he would never he would never talk shit like he knows but there are some people that are like they hate their own team so much just that they have to go hate on someone else's yeah it's uh it's wild so yeah i uh but I, look do we need a new team as far as sporting goes do we need to go well let's wait till the open cup final verse before we go find another yeah. team for the playoff uh sporting in the second half of this game alan Polito didn't waste any time 49th minute um this was a wild goal this was like the type of goal I'm used to seeing Sporting give up, not the type of goal I'm used to seeing Sporting score, because Alan Polito got the ball in the box, and like five Colorado defenders kind of just coalesced around him, and nobody kicked the ball. And he just kind of like slow motion dribbled around all of them and then just finished it to make it 2-0. It was it was pretty pretty cool from Polito there. It huh? was. It was. So it was, it was a good finish there. And then it went on uh, into the 69th minute. Eric Tommy scored a very nice goal. That made it 3-0, uh, Sporting Kansas City. And and it really, at that point, felt like this game was iced. Eric Tommy from distance. It might have been deflected a little bit, but 3-0, 69th minute. Feeling good. Um, but then just a few, few minutes later, uh, off a set piece, as is tradition, because, of course, 
Uh, Edwards for Colorado just gets a loose ball in the box. It's not cleared very well. It dribbles past uh, Pulse Camp, and suddenly that third goal from Eric Tommy felt a little bit more important than it did five minutes prior. I, I Had this been 2-1 at this point and not 3-1, I think I would have been like, okay, well, this is how it ends. We're going to lose this game somehow. And uh, yeah, it was nerve-wracking. I got to tell you, man, it, it's just the 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 theme of this game was that we controlled it. Mm-hmm. Like uh, our passing was spectacular. Uh, our movement off the ball was spectacular. And I was like, who who are these guys? I was so confused. I'm like, am I watching like a good team? And it made me get a little excited. I was like, okay, hey, play spoiler a little bit. You know, I don't think mm-hmm. we're going to make that playoff line. Spoiler alert, we did not. Uh, it's not possible for us to do so. But had we won at Minnesota on Saturday, it definitely would have been a, a, a tense conversation. Would have been mathematically I- possible, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, this last goal that Sporting scored, it, it's just frustrating, like you said, to see them score goals like this. You know, Basong Springs Agata, um, who who sends it back to, to Daniel Shallowy, finds Eric Tommy in the box, takes one touch, slots home with the left foot. I mean, these are the types of counter goals and, and against the, the run of play goals and whatnot that Sporting should be capable of that they just simply were not doing all year. Um, and yeah, it, it was very frustrating to see a team occasionally put a game together like this. I mean, expected goals was 2.72 to 0.85, according to Thought Mob. Zach Steffen was pissed yeah. all night Correct. at his own people, just looking at you like, what are you doing? Right. Uh, and, and they did look pretty dumb. Their defense looked pretty stupid. Uh, but it, it's, dude, we had other moments, dude. I think uh, Agata- oh, they could have scored seven goals in this game. Mimo had a great like knuckler that went out outside the goal. Uh, Agata uh, headed it into the post. He really enjoys the post. Um, he missed another cross by like an inch. It was right yes. across the face of goal. Uh, yes, with him hitting the woodwork all the time. The the man just loves the post. It's just dude, a few inches to the other side. What are you doing? Yeah, I mean, like you said, thirty one shots, ten on target. Twelve shots were blocked, which means that there could have been more on target even than the ten, but. Um, I do have to give a shout out before we move on from this game. I was talking to uh, to Thad Bell, who started KC Soccer Journal before the game, and I was like, "What do you think?" And he goes, seven one Sporting," and he kind of laughed. And he, I was like, "Okay." He goes, "No." And he goes, "I don't know, maybe like four one Sporting." And I was like, "Really?" And he was like, oh, "I'm gonna go with it." And I was like, "That's not gonna happen." And then, sure enough, they scored in the eighth minute, and I was like, "They on pace for seven goals," and and it ended four one, which is exactly what what uh, he called it at. So it's unbelievable. Uh, I was very happy, man. I, I one of the biggest changes in here was having Pulse Camp in goal, and uh, I'm not saying that's better than Tim Melia, but hey, we we got a favorable result here, and Tim Melia wasn't in there. Yeah, he it. Uh, Peter was very complimentary of, of Alan Polito. He kind of talked about that Polito had been injured uh, with that lingering uh, knee injury um, earlier in the year, and maybe that was why some of the struggles, but. I don't think that's going to garner a lot of sympathy from uh, from anybody, really, because um, he's been injured so much throughout his time with, with Sporting Kansas City. Um, I do want to give a shout-out just quickly before we move on. Kyrie Shelton in this game just absolutely demolished at right back. And, and Peter said, quote, his game was top-notch, a top game for an outside back, especially to be able to play the way he does for the limited time that he's played there. It's incredibly rewarding for him because I know that he's had a lot of struggles, but it's incredibly rewarding for the team and for the staff because he's providing an incredible contribution right now to that back line. Um, with him starting it right back, I think we're six wins, two losses, and two ties. That's pretty good. So, shout out yeah. to Kyrie, and and he he was it's it's he gets a lot of shit from a lot of people. A lot of times, it's undeserved to the extent that he gets it. But so I always like seeing Kyrie play well, and 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 he was very appreciative in the post game as well. He will, he, man, if he has a good game on Wednesday against LAFC, that'll be mm-hmm. outstanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was very cool. And then Peter did shout out the grounds crew because uh, they had a, a relatively quick turnaround after KU played there on uh, the previous weekend. So, Yes, great, great game from KU there. Good job. <laughs> college, college football sucks. Why do we do this? I don't know. I don't know either, man. I, I don't know. I, and now all the jokes are coming out about, hey, uh, wait till basketball season. I'm like, yeah. That's what people say. <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer. Um, and then we went to the Minnesota, or we turned to the Minnesota game. Um, and a, a different eleven. I mean, we had uh, Agata and the free foot in there, but 
um, and, and Kyrie. But other than that, I mean, it was a, a largely rotated lineup. Shallowy and Tommy were up there. Uh, Voltaire and Jake Davis was, uh, were in the midfield. Davis returned from his suspension. Then Volodar Rosero and Leibold in front of Tim Melia. Um, and we knew that Minnesota, going into this game, this was a potential elimination game for the playoffs because of, of where they were sitting and, and the amount of possible points they had left in sporting and, and whatnot. And, you know, this was a game where sporting dominated possession, sporting dominated shots, sporting uh, had one more shot on goal. And if you look at the expected goals for the game, um, granted, this is bolstered by a penalty attempt that did not go well. But if you look at the expected goals for the game, 1.8 to 1.1 in sporting KC's favor. Um, it wasn't like they didn't have chances. You know, Peter even said we should have scored in the first half as well. It's disappointing that we didn't get anything out of it. But um, this was a game that ultimately ended the first half 0-0 in the 66th minute. Uh, Minnesota, thanks to Yaboya, um, take take the lead or take a 1-0 lead thanks to, a, you know, a shot from somewhat from distance and just get, gets past Melia and Ultimately, that was uh, all Minnesota would have needed to 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 get the win, but they did um, after a little bit of a controversial penalty attempt with Willie Agata that, that we can talk about here in a little bit. Um, Minnesota just calmly seals the game in the 94th minute and makes it 2-0 and Sporting ultimately lose. But I don't know. This game just uh, never never was was quite right for Sporting. Just not their night. This game just annoys me. Um, you know, when you're when you're at half nil nil, it's pretty exciting. You're like, okay, hey, nothing gained, nothing lost here. Things mm-hmm. things feel fine. Um, but man, that that weather delay can do anything to a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you lose your fan support. You know, a lot of people went home, mm-hmm. uh, rightfully so. But it, it, it's you know, teams get cold. You know, maybe they were on the hot foot. They had good momentum, and now two hours, you're cold. You're done. That's a whole other game that you've just sat through. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, and there were some subs that were made, like you said. You know, Willie had a chance in that first half with a a very powerful header in the eighth minute that, you know, he maybe could have scored. And, yeah, after you run for 45 minutes and and then you sit for two hours, it's really hard to warm your muscles up again to get to a point where you can, you know, comfortably put in the effort that you need to. Nate Bucati said at the beginning of this game, and I don't know if it's true, but it has to be if he said it, I would think, that this was the 30th straight game with a different lineup. So he, they, we've had 30 unique lineups. If Nate said it, I believe it. I, that's, what I, that's what I thought. I was like, okay, I mean, he, they, did, they do the research. They have people that tell them these things. And 30? Like, how did we, I mean, we don't even notice that. But yeah, we've been changing it up like crazy. Yeah, I mean, so you want to get back on Pete, go back in time to last year when people were like, Peter, why don't you ever experiment with anything? And he's like, I'll see your comment and I will experiment way too much. Yeah, well, and some of it's probably due to injury and some of it's due to suspension and some of it's due. I mean, like our midfield was decimated and then, you know, our, our only right back on the roster gets transferred to Europe. And so it it's it's been a weird year, but I wouldn't have guessed um, 30. That's crazy. But. I mean, one change here, one change there. I mean, you don't notice it as much. You know, this week obviously it was two drastically different different lineups. But, but... the best teams have consistency in their lineups. Mm-hmm. Always have. Yeah. Um. That you know they play together well, and we just haven't had that all year, man. Even having Jake Davis back in the lineup, it, it was like cool. Jake's there. Maybe that'll, you know, he's he's got a couple games off. Maybe he's excited to be there. And not really. And nothing really happened there. You know what I mean? It, it, it's we, we needed something more. Yeah, it was certainly a bummer. Um, you know, some some interesting comments. I feel bad because like Sporting hasn't made a penalty. I think all season. <laughs> oh my god! And, and it's not like they haven't had chances. Um, they have had chances, but they have just not capitalized on the on the penalty chances that um, have been awarded to them. And and Sporting late in this game was was awarded a penalty for. Uh, in in the eighty seventh, eighty eighth minute, I believe it was. Um, there was there was a hard challenge on on memo, um, in the box that uh resulted in in a penalty, and uh there was a little conversation at the spot, 
And ultimately, it's it's Willie Agata who comes away with the ball, and he steps up, and he takes the penalty kick, and it just bounces off the woodwork. He tries to go up for 90, and it doesn't work. Um, Let me take you through my how this went at my house. Okay. We're in bed, and I, I'm like, penalty! Oh, my God! And uh, I see who steps up, and I say, oh, no. No, 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 no. What are we doing? No. And I said, this isn't good. He's absolutely going to miss this. And and Marissa goes, we, stop. Don't think like that. I said, I'm not thinking like that. That's what's about to happen. And then it happens. And I go, I fucking told you. <laughs> I was so upset. I was never been more upset to be up, be so right. <laughs> yeah, it's it sucks. Um, and it's not the first. I mean, we don't have a good penalty taker, it would seem, on this team. And, and Johnny was asked about it after the game. And he goes, that's on me. I should have taken it. Willie and Allen grabbed the ball, and I didn't want it to turn into a bit of an ugly scenario that you can tend to see at times. So that's on me as a captain. I should step up and take it. Willie said he was feeling it, so I allowed him to take it, but that's definitely on me. I should have taken the ball. There shouldn't have been any doubt, and I should have taken the penalty. That's the leader. That's my job as the leader of the team. Um, Do you see Peter's response about uh, his little pool reporter response, kind of? Yeah, he he took it and he missed it. I took it and he missed. There's nothing else to say about it. And then asked about options. He took it. It is what it is. And I'm like, okay, so you're training to be a referee in your next career when you, yeah. you know, drive sporting into the ground here. What do we do it? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a huge bummer. Um, and this isn't something that would happen in, in the days of old when Benny Fellhaber was the penalty taker. Like if anybody earned a penalty... Yeah. There was no question, you know, Benny's the penalty guy. There wasn't a, like when Johnny's like, I didn't want to turn it into a bit of an ugly scenario like you see at times. It should never come to that. You're this just, is your club, bro. You should know before the game. You should be like, this is our, if there's a penalty, Johnny's taking it. If there's a penalty, Allen's taking it. Like, work that out in advance. You can't leave it to this, like, I don't know, I'm feeling good tonight, so I think I should take it. Because then what if Alan's like, yeah, but I'm feeling good tonight, so I think I should take it. And Johnny's like, fuck both of you, I'm going to take it. And then they're all mad at each other. That's not time to work it out. This is not a pitcher's bullpen where it's like, whose arm's feeling good? You know, all right, Right. we're pitching you tonight. Like, yeah, you're the the penalty guy, man. And Johnny converts that shit. And Willie... Higher rate than Alan and Willie. Dude, we saw Willie miss uh, his penalty attempt when he first came to this club Mm -hmm. in that Open Cup game in... uh, uh, well, man, who was that against? I don't even remember. But Some yeah. California team. Well, San Jose, maybe? I don't know. No, but it was the it, it U.S. Sacramento. Yes. And and he missed it, and then he makes it because they were off the, he was off his line or something Yeah, and does a big old flip or whatever, and we lose the freaking game. Like, no, that's not, yeah, that's not how you do it. Uh, yeah, right. Willie's had chances. Willie's not the penalty guy. Willie should never no. take another penalty ever again. And, and Allen has had his chances, and he has not put him away. I don't should not take a penalty ever again. If there's a guy on this team that should be the penalty taker, it's Johnny Russell. Alan's and, supposed to be world class, dude. What what is going on? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. So, like, yeah, if you're going to score two goals like that last week and going into an Open Cup final and you just scored a brace last week, so did Eric Tommy. I'm feeling okay with them on the field. Because had not LAFC had a bad run of games? Yeah. I mean, well, yes, they have. <laughs> Um, they, they haven't won, I think in like five straight games. Um, so it's certainly possible. Um, however, I would say, um, this is going to be a very, very difficult game for, for sporting Kansas city. They're going on the road and yes, LAFC did not win their most recent game. Um, they also didn't start like half of their typical starting lineup. They sat Lloris, they sat Ilya, they sat Buanga, they sat Olivier Giroud, they start, they sat, uh, Mateo, uh, Mateus Bogush, they, they didn't start a significant portion of, of their key starters. Um, and you know, is this an impossible game to win? No, absolutely not. Uh, is this a very difficult game to win on the road? Yes. This is going to be incredibly difficult because sporting Kansas city will essentially need every single thing to go right for them. And they will have virtually zero margin for error you cannot give up set piece goals if you want to win this game against lafc last two times we played them we drew them yeah i mean it was nil nil this past march and then last year was a one one situation um but it's we've got up there and we you know 
we haven't beat them since 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it was it was a good win for us. Beat them by like three, I think. But it's uh, it, it's it's going to be tough, man. And, and but when you got Allen getting hot like that and Eric getting hot, it's it's a little a little exciting. But you know, Ilya Sanchez is going to be looking to to beat us, right? Oh yeah, I mean Ilya. He, yeah, I mean at this point, what, what are the what, chances this goes to penalties? I, well, what I wanted to say is, if you offered me right now, you said it's going to end in a draw and go to penalties. I say absolutely, I'll take it. Sign sign me up. Because if yeah, you put sure if you put Tim Ilya between the sticks on penalties, I'm not it's not like Hugo Lloris isn't a bum. I mean he's he, he's played at the highest level of the game, but. If you told me right now that Sporting Kansas City could get this game to penalties, 100% sign me up and let's get weird and see what happens. Because <laughs> that's 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 a, a legitimate strategy for Sporting Kansas City going into this game against such a high-powered team like LAFC. Uh, oh, yeah, man. It's just, you know, they they score a, a pretty good number of goals. Um, they have, you know, 52 goals allowed or scored on the year. They've only allowed 40 goals. Sporting Kansas City has 49 goals scored and have allowed 58 goals in the year in MLS play. So, um, you know, this is this is a game where they're going to have to defend a lot. And Peter even talked about that. He goes, if you go back to that time in the Philadelphia game, we defended for long, long stretches of the game. We don't need to drive the game. Everyone's got to be in whatever position we need them in that moment. And I think our team understands that and is very capable of it. Um, that's the strategy, man. Let them... Come at you, pick your spots, defend smart, and then convert the chances that you have. That's the game plan for Sporting Kansas City. Um, do you know who the two players on our team that were the only ones that were a part of the 2017 U.S. Open Cup final? Oh, goodness. Um, that would be Timelia. Okay. And- and oh, okay, hold on. I'm going through my Rolodex. Would that be uh, shallowy around back? Yeah, there it is. Look at that. It's, it's almost uh, like I know what I'm talking about. It's pretty good. I mean, it, it, it that means there's a lot of hungry guys on this team. Mm-hmm. They're a little new to this situation, and uh, it might seem like a silly competition the way the Open Cup was almost like canceled on us, you know, but yeah. uh, we, we stopped the steal on that shit. We would not allow it. Stop. And and it's back, man. And, and this this matters more to me than anything in this league right now. Well, someone like Johnny Russell deserves to win a trophy at this club. Yeah. Like it and would. We be had great. an easy route here, though, man. We we, we only played one MLS team. We did. Uh, so I don't know. I it's it's maybe this works out. Maybe it doesn't. I'm gonna have fun watching it unfold the whole time. Yeah, it'll it'll be fun. Can I sit here and say confidently? I think that. Sporting Kansas City are going to defeat LAFC. No, I can't sit here and say that. But, I mean, hey, get your coffee out because this is a 9.30 p.m. Central Time kickoff. It's on Apple TV for free, so you can watch it. You do not need to have MLS Season Pass to watch this game. Uh, I know our, our producer, Nick, was mad that it's on a Wednesday night and not a weekend because this, this is a, a, a domestic cup final. I mean, this, you know, this is the type of game that... Um, people should care about and mm-hmm. yeah mls moves games around for Concacaf champions cup uh they they're not moving i mean i know we're at the end of the season and you don't know who's going to be in this game it, it, logistically maybe it's a little bit more complicated but i'd like to think there's a way if you really wanted to to get this game on a weekend but I well this is this will be lafc's first open cup if they win uh but it'll be an mls record for us if we win dude if we're tied up there with Seattle, we could break that record and be, and who knows if this competition is going to be around. We we don't know, right? And so for us to be the last ones to win it would be cool, but also to hold that record for the team who won it the most would yeah. be cool. And it's MLS, dude. Anything could happen. We just beat Chicago for, or Colorado four to one. Right. That wasn't supposed to happen. That's the thing. Anything can happen in MLS on any given day. Yeah. All it takes is a ball to bounce weird, or a ball to break right, or. Someone or really got it to pressure the defense and get a deflection. Right. I mean, anything. Uh, I, mean, I, I wish sometimes I wish our strikers would turn on a Casey current game and, and watch somebody by the name of Demo Chawinga and just be like, oh, I can do that too, potentially. I mean, now they probably don't have as much stamina or energy as Temwa has because I've never seen somebody do what she does over 90 minutes. But yeah. 
it's it i mean you see the defensive pressure that she puts on people and the amount of turnovers she forces just because she's working her ass off i like to see sporting do that a little bit more too it's bananas yes um one thing i do want to make sure we we hit on before we get too far down the road is as we had not yet given out a, a holiday distillery toast to the match and we didn't talk about this before. Um, you know, Alan Polito had a very good game Wednesday. Eric Tommy had a very good game Wednesday. Kyrie Shelton had a very good game Wednesday. I think they all would be worthy, deserving recipients of this, especially if you only consider the Wednesday game and don't consider the Minnesota game. But I'm going to throw a curveball here a little bit. I want to give my holiday distillery toast to the match. I got the uh, the bottled in bond Missouri straight bourbon whiskey here. Holiday distillery toast to the match. To the sporting Kansas City fans who stuck it out through the weather delay in the Minnesota game. Because oh, yeah. the people who were there, that's dedication. I don't blame you if you left, but if you were there knowing that this is a game where elimination from the playoffs was on the line and you sat there and stood with that team until that game was done, hey, holiday distillery toast to the match, sporting Kansas City fans who are still at that Minnesota game by the time it was done. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. Are you feeling... You feeling like we can go to LA and, and and get a result, or I mean, get a win? I guess there's no there's no result anymore. Yeah, I mean, I I think we can. I mean, it's gonna take a lot of work. They're a hell of a team, and you said they rested most all their guys on Saturday. They rested a bunch of them, yeah. Okay, well they're ready. I mean, they're taking this thing seriously. They know uh, their fans are gonna be pumped, man. Uh, a potential trophy for them. Uh, they've never been in this at the end of the competition like this before, so. It's a lot to play for, and I, I don't know, man. I hope, I hope, I hope Tommy goes off, dude. I hope Polito's just in the zone. It's very possible because seeing what they did to Colorado's defense is just like, whoa, yeah, do that again. Yeah, sporting, um, sporting has a very successful history in in cup finals. Um, sporting has never lost a U.S. Open cup final. They're four and zero in U.S. Right. Open cup finals, so. Um, now only one of those was away, right? Um, I Philadelphia was certainly away. Yes, fifteen seventeen were at home, and I think oh four. Well, fifteen was on the road. Fifteen was in Philly. Sorry, fifteen was on the road. Yep, seventeen was at home. Um, I don't. I wasn't around for the oh four game in Kansas City, so I'm I'm not sure. And I believe twenty twelve was at home. Um. But yeah, I mean, this is this is a big one, and and like you're saying, a majority of this roster um, has not competed for a cup. So, well, how about dude? Look, uh, uh, sporting list of this in cup finals in general, we've only ever lost one time, mm-hmm. and that was 2004 MLS Cup. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I mean, that, it's that that's a great number that we know how to go. But I mean, these guys. Like I said, man, it's, these guys haven't been together all that long. They they haven't had that experience with a final like this. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's there's a history here. Even though that LAFC leads the all time series, like you said, twenty twenty one, Sporting defeated LAFC four to one at BMO Stadium. It's the second heaviest home loss in LAFC history. Um, and you know, Polito, he's had some success against LAFC. Three goals and one assist in six appearances. Um, Daniel Shallowy's had some some success, so you know this is uh, this will be interesting. We'll see. Two um, one sporting. Let's go. You're calling it. Calling the shot. <laughs> Why the hell not? I got nothing to lose. Nothing yeah. to play for. It's. I mean, it's true. I mean, there's a, there's going to be a no other pub uh, watch party. I'm not going to be able to make that, but there's going to be it's going to be popping down at uh, Power and Light, no other pub. So, um, I have nothing to do. I will be home. I might have myself a little, uh, a little poppy. You have those little drinks, those little poppy drinks. Are those good? Yeah, they're not bad. They're not soda. Don't start thinking you're having a soda, but it's like a healthier soda, if you will. Those are the ones that I see the ads where they're like, "This is the future of soda." Yeah, but like if you go into it thinking it's gonna be like a sprite, it's like no, it's just kind of a lemon lime beverage. You know, it's not as it's not a sprite, not as sugary. Yeah. So. Okay. It'll uh it'll certainly be uh be interesting to see how this game goes. So and then no matter what happens, you're gonna be on an emotional high or you're gonna be emotionally drained because you have this cut final and you're gonna leave it all out on the line. Peter's gonna do whatever he needs to do to win that game on Wednesday. And then you turn around 
And this weekend on Saturday, you travel to the other side of the state and you go play in St. Louis. And, uh, you know, Sporting's had some uh, relative success um, in recent history against St. Louis. Sporting leads all time series, three wins to, to, to two draws and two losses. Um, this is a St. Louis team that is not good. <laughs> they, uh, they are worse than Sporting Kansas City. Um, we're, we're level on, on points. They have more draws than Sporting does. Sporting has two more wins on the season. Um, but St. Louis technically still has not been eliminated from playoff contention because they have played one less game than Sporting Kansas City. Sporting only has three games remaining on the season and they are 11 points back of a playoff spot. So we are eliminated. Um, St. Louis is also 11 points back, but they have four games left. So technically they have 12 points available and they just beat San Jose on the road um, in their most recent game. So if we go to St. Louis, we don't even have to win. We just have to get a point, a draw on the road, a single point against St. Louis City SC. Not only will continue to have Sporting Kansas City leading the all-time series, but it will eliminate St. Louis City SC from the 2024 MLS Cup playoffs officially. So, Dude. That they means oh my god, what a horrible, horrible coincidence. It could be. I mean, we last year we talked about, you know, a couple months prior to this, when you know, we're sitting there in July and we're like, oh, maybe there might be a chance. We're like, wouldn't it be funny if we somehow found our way to the playoffs and we eliminated St. Louis City from the playoffs? And look what happened. We made our way to the playoffs, and not only did we eliminate St. Louis City, we absolutely dominated them and we crushed them at City Park at home. And now we could do the other thing, not make the playoffs and still eliminate and eliminate them playoffs. making the playoffs altogether. I mean, this <laughs> this is this is serendipitous. And you know, if, if we can't do it, then I don't want them to do it either. And the chances of them if we're not gonna if, if somehow we lose this weekend, they're almost certainly still not gonna make the playoffs. It's they yeah. have, have to win all four of their games in Minnesota has to lose all of their remaining games. It's very, very statistically unlikely. Right, but but you'd love to be the ones to do it, especially with the win, dude. Oh my god, if we can go there and get a, do- I mean, perfect week is we win the Open Cup and then we go and we eliminate St. Louis with a dominant win in St. Louis. Oh man, call it. I, cool. I, I can I can end this season not happy, but happier than I would otherwise on a higher note than it would have been. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's uh, I love that. St. Louis has had a, a rough year, but it would certainly be fun to go to St. Louis and uh, yeah. And ruin their season any even more than it's already been ruined. <laughs> so I'm not going to call it and say it's going to happen. I, well, I well, I'll say this: I think we get a result in St. Louis. I don't think we lose. Cool. So dig it. I think we are going to eliminate St. Louis City SC from the playoffs. I'm excited, man. I love midweek soccer. Don't exactly love 9:30 p.m., but I'm gonna I'm gonna love it regardless. And who doesn't love a freaking I-70 showdown against St. Louis? I, I love, love it. it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, let us know what, what you all are thinking. You know, as you know, we have, uh, the KCSN hotline that is powered by Mint Mobile. So if you want to send us your thoughts, whether it's on, uh, the Open Cup this week or St. Louis or the season at large, 913-407-6524. Make sure you text that KCSN hotline powered by Mint Mobile and we'll answer your questions and read your comments right here on air. So you got anything else you want to uh, say to our good listeners before we call it for this week? Nope. That's it, man. Sounds great. I'm. I'm. Let's have some positive thoughts. You know, do your, be, get your good vibes going on Wednesday. Yeah. It's a Cup final, man. It is a Cup final. And look, as poorly as this season has gone, this is an exciting week for Sporting Kansas City. There's things to get yeah. excited about. Get excited for an Open Cup. We can win a trophy. We can eliminate St. Louis. This is probably the most fun potential week that Sporting's had in a long time. This might be your last time to have a little fun this year. Yeah. So let's go out. Let's do it big, and uh, let's win a cup, man. Absolutely. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. We appreciate you. Make sure you leave that five-star rating and review. We'll read it here on air. Uh, you can email us, nootherpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at nootherpod, at dancouser, at jcmac03. And you can check us out on YouTube, KCSN Soccer, or via the KC uh, Sports Network app. But until next time, he's Dan. I'm Jimmy. We'll catch you all later. See ya. Tire Tracks. <laughs>